Let's worship the Lord together. Here we go. I heard an old story. Cross to the grave. 
line on this. Um, uh, and Lord hates the day when the faithful uh, face shall be sight, when the clouds be rolled back as a scroll, when the trump shall be sound, and the Lord shall descend. Even so, it is well with my soul. I, I love that that third verse right there. It's just even even at the writing of this particular hymn that it, it, there was this expectation for the return of Jesus Christ, and it's always been there. Amen. Amen. And, uh, yeah, we, we covet that now more than ever. Yeah. There are certain things that it's good to covet, and one of those things is the return of Jesus Christ. And so come on, Jesus. So, yeah, you never know. You never know. All right, if you got your Bibles, take your Bibles out, get a pencil and the sermon notes there, and take your Bibles. Hold on, let's draw a place in the Bible. Say, I believe. I believe. In my Bible. In my Bible. Is the Word of God. It is the Word of God. I will love it. I will love it. I will learn it. I will learn it. And I will live it. And I will live it. To the glory of God. To the glory of God. Amen. Amen. That's our commitment. The word of God. Um, let's, let's pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, once again we pause to thank you for the teachings of your holy word. And Lord, we ask now as we open your word together once again that you would open our hearts and our minds and our eyes and our ears and all that we are, Lord, to the deeper truths that you would have for us today. Father, do in every heart that which only you can do through the power of the Holy Spirit. And Lord, we pray that as we consider this issue of peace of mind, Father, you would just fill us with that comfort and that assurance. And that peace that only comes from you, Lord. We love you and praise you. We ask this in Jesus' holy name. And all God's people said, Amen. 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 Uh, today I want us to take a look at the five keys to peace of mind. Uh, next week, probably next next Sunday, we'll be doing a we'll be doing a Thanksgiving message and probably doing the Lord's Supper next Sunday. So so that you know what's coming. Um, but today the five keys to peace of mind. Um, a while back there was an article written in a magazine that that dealt with this issue of stress and uh, and here's what the article said it said stress is taking a terrible toll on our nation's health and economy more than 60 percent of all visits to physicians are for stress related disorders stress costs americans more than 150 billion dollars a year in absenteeism lost productivity accidents and medical insurance every week more than 112 million people take medication for stress related symptoms 112 million people every week taking something for stress related symptoms and that's something uh, stress is is epidemic in our nation right now uh, and then you add to that all the stress of everything that's happening in Israel all the stress that's happening financially all the stress that's happening in our culture and economic I mean you just put all that together and and we're one stressed out nation amen and uh, and yet if there's one thing that we need as a stressed out nation even in the midst of the stress we need peace of mind about it and, uh, and sometimes we don't think that peace of mind can coexist with stress. And in fact, they, they really shouldn't, but sometimes they do. And, uh, and we're, we're going to talk about that a little bit and how that kind of works. Um, I think it's ob obvious, that, though, that all of us live in a stress-related uh, stress world. In fact, I would venture to say that most of you here today are under some kind of stress right now. We all experience some kind of stress in our lives. But the point is we all have to deal with stress. Amen? We all have to deal with it. It's there. We have to deal with it. But what's amazing is all the different things that people do in an effort to deal with the stress that they face. Um, some people will go to therapy. They'll try the latest fads. Uh, they'll try things uh, on TikTok or whatever it is. Whatever that thing is. You know, they'll try stuff like that. They'll, they'll diet. They'll join a health club. They'll drink. Uh, a lot of people use drugs. Um, They'll change jobs. Some people become introverted. They just well up inside themselves and don't. They just don't want to have anything to do with anybody else. They just become introverted as a result of stress. Um, a lot of people become angry. Uh, anger is a result of stress too. I mean, we see a lot of anger and violence uh, being uh, poured out as a result of stress. People do all kinds of things in an effort to cope with stress. But the Bible has the one true way of dealing with everyday stress in our lives. Uh, as a matter of fact, look at John 14, 27. Look at what Jesus had to say. It's the first verse on your outline there, John 14, 27. Jesus said, peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. I do not give it to you as the world does. Do not let your hearts be distressed or lacking in courage. Now, would you circle the word distressed right there? Because that's just another way of saying stressed out. Uh, don't let your hearts be stressed out. Don't let your hearts be distressed. Now, Jesus says a couple of things here. First of all, he says that peace is a gift. God's peace is a gift. Notice Jesus said, my peace I give to you. I'm just giving it to you. It's, peace of mind is really not something that um, you work for. It's not something you earn. Peace of mind is not something you buy. It's not something you learn, even, really. 
even though we're talking about it, I mean, to some degree you learn about it, but you can't possess it by, by learning alone. There has to be some action involved in that. Uh, but it's not something you really learn. It's not something that you search for even, really. It's just it, it, peace of mind is a gift. It's a gift you receive. And God's peace is different from that that the world offers. For example, God's peace is not fragile like the world's peace is fragile. Uh, I mean, in the last 3,500 years of recorded uh, world history, uh, human existence has only had a total of 286 years of peace worldwide. In other words, in 3,500 years, we've only experienced 286 years of peace worldwide. So a few months here, a few months there, a few months here, and, uh, and you put it all together, it's only 286 years of peace in a 3,500 year period. Um, that's because human peace is really based on circumstances. Um, you, you know, if everything's okay, then I'm going to be at peace. If there's no conflict, then I'm going to be at peace. If there's no, no stress, then I'm going to be at peace. You know, but, but if there's chaos, if there's stress, then I'm, gonna be, I'm not going to be at peace. Uh, there's, there's no peace in my life then. So it's based on, the world's peace is based upon external circumstances, what's going on on the outside. But the Bible makes it clear that God's peace is not based on external circumstances, but it's an internal thing. It's what's going on inside of you, irregardless of what's going on on the outside of you. So at the same time that there's all kinds of pressure, all kinds of stress, you can still have peace. You can still experience God's peace. So today we want to look at how can I be at peace while I'm under pressure, while this pressure is being poured out on us. How can I be at peace under the stress that I have to deal with every single day? And there's basically five keys to having and keeping a peace of mind in a stress-filled world. And, and, and let me just say, we could almost put it this way. These are five keys to learning how to stay sane in an insane world. I mean, if you practice these five things, you're going to keep your sanity about you, which means you're going to keep your peace of mind. Um, now, it's a very simple message, but I want you to take a look at these simple instructions, and I want you to put them to work in your life, even this week, because I don't want you to just be a hearer of the Word of God. That doesn't do a lot of good. You, you need to become a doer of the Word of God. Amen. Amen? We need to be doers of the Word of God. Now, the first thing you need to do if you're going to experience God's peace of mind in our stress-filled lives is this. Number one, you have to accept God's pardon. Now, I know that sounds simplistic, but hang in there with me because this is really important. You have to accept God's pardon. And this one step is probably the most important one of all because if you don't do this one, then frankly, the honest truth is, none of the others will ever really work anyway. So this one has to be in place. You've got to accept God's pardon in your life. Look at the next verse, Romans 5. 1. Paul said, Therefore, since we have been justified through faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, we have peace with God because we've been what? Justified through faith. Now, you and I were made to live in harmony with God. That, that's how God wants us to live, is in harmony with Him. In fact, when you're out of harmony with God, it causes a great deal of stress in your life. That's, that, that will create stress, just being out of harmony with God. In fact, being out of harmony with God, I think, is the greatest source of stress in a person's life. When you're out of harmony with God, the truth is nothing else clicks, nothing else works. The number one source of stress, listen, according to psychologists, and, and all psychologists agree on this pretty much, the number one source of stress in people's lives, the, the one thing that stands out the most is guilt. Guilt stands out the most as one of the reasons why most people are stressed out. Nobody is perfect. And everybody said? Yeah. <laughs> and nobody's perfect. Uh, and because we're imperfect, we make tons of mistakes, and we do all kinds of dumb things that produces guilt in our lives. And as guilt just piles up, that produces all kinds of stress in our lives. If there's nothing you can do with guilt, all it does is pile up, right? If, if there isn't a release of guilt, it's just going to continue to pile up. So what we need really when it comes to guilt is to be pardoned what we need is to be forgiven and have that guilt removed now again romans 5 1 says since we have been justified through faith uh, so what does justified mean well here's an easy way to think of it justified means justified never sin that's what justified means it means justified never sin um, in other words to receive the forgiveness of jesus christ means that jesus wipes the slate clean it's clean 
His forgiveness is so complete that it's justified never sin. It's justified never done that wrong thing. It's justified never done that imperfect thing. We're pardoned from all of our past mistakes, failures, sin, however you want to word it. We're all we're pardoned from that. Now, I said this many times before, but even if there was no such thing as heaven, and there is a heaven, but even if there were no such thing as heaven, it would be worth becoming a Christian just to have a clear conscience. Because a guilty conscience causes incredible stress in people's lives. However, even Christians who know that they're forgiven often don't feel forgiven, though. They, don't, they often don't feel forgiven, and because they haven't really accepted God's forgiveness, they don't feel it. I mean, they believe that he can forgive them, they just can't accept it. They just haven't accepted it. They feel like they've got to keep punishing themselves, but they're already forgiven. But I haven't been punished enough. I've got to punish myself some more. It's, a, it's, a, it's an over sense of justice. But that's the whole point of being justified. Is it takes that sense of justice away from you, right? And puts it in whose hands? In God's. It places it firmly where it belongs, in God's hands. So we need to learn to really accept God's pardon. You know, Dr. Leslie Weatherhead, a noted psychologist, has said, she said that the forgiveness of God is the most powerful therapeutic idea in the world. If a person can really believe that God has forgiven them, then that person can be saved from neuroticism, a nervous breakdown, and all the physical complications that come from a stressed out life of guilt, end quote. Wow. Look at the next verse on your outline there, Micah 7, 18. It says, who is a God like you? Pardoning iniquity and overlooking, uh, overlooking transgression for the remnant of his heritage. He will not retain his anger forever because he delights in mercy. Would you circle the word delights there? God delights in extending mercy. God's eager to forgive you. He's eager to pardon you and give you a clean slate to live from. God is willing and God is ready to clear your conscience, to erase from your conscience the guilt that's built up there. But you've got to be willing to receive it. You've got to be willing to do that. Now, the word pardon means to release from punishment. That's what word, the word pardon means. It means to be released from punishment. It means to be forgiven completely so that there is no more punishment related to that, that incident. I mean, I had a man in my office a few years ago. He came into my office and, uh, during the week, and, and uh, uh, he'd come to see me because he was at a point in his life where he was angry all the time. He, he said, just angry all the time, and, and he was snapping at his family, and he was on edge all the time. Now, he, he was a Christian, but he was miserable. And so I, I, I told him, I said, well, you know, many times past guilt keeps us in a position of stress and even anger. Uh, it'll produce anger. Like I said, is there anything in your past that you still feel guilty about? And as soon as I said that, I mean, I knew I struck a nerve because big old tears welled up in his eyes. And, and he actually just started crying right there in the office. And, and, he, and he said, he said I, just, I just can't stop feeling guilty, Pastor, about the pornography that I've been involved with. The shame of it is almost more than I can, I can bear. And I said, well, are you involved in it now? And he said, no. He said, God's helped me to overcome that problem, but I'm still so ashamed of what I did back then, what I did way back then. And, and I said, well, have you accepted God's forgiveness over this? And he said, well, I've confessed that to God many, many times. And I said, that's not what I said. I said, have you accepted his complete forgiveness for that? And he said, well, I guess I really haven't. And he goes, because I still feel like I need to pay for my sin. And I told him, I said, look, you can never pay enough for your sin. That's why Jesus died for you. He took your place. He paid the ultimate price so that you can be fully pardoned. I said, the only thing God wants you to do is to really just receive his gift of forgiveness and then forgive yourself. If God has forgiven you, you have no right now to continue to punish yourself over this. You need to forgive yourself as well. And right there in my office, he knelt down, and we knelt down together, and he prayed to really receive God's forgiveness. And you know, the stress in his life just seemed to disappear, and he was no longer as angry or bitter a person. God really did cleanse him of that. Listen, folks, God offers to us complete forgiveness of everything that we've ever done wrong, and I just believe that maybe some of us might even need that, even today. I mean, maybe we've been carrying around this guilt over something that happened years ago for far too long, and we need to just really let it go and really receive the full forgiveness and pardon of God today. To just really let it go. If you receive the forgiveness of God, He's going to give you a brand new start. He'll, he'll wipe the slate clean. He'll give you a brand new peace of mind that comes with His forgiveness, with His pardon. 
That's what God will do. That's what he wants to do in every single Christian's life. The problem is, I think far too many Christians still are punishing themselves for things that happened way back then. And they just need to let it go. Because it's done with as far as God is concerned. And we just got to release it. Amen? Amen. So after you've accepted God's pardon, then comes the second step, which is really just the rest of this stuff. Once you do that, the rest of this stuff just happens. Okay? And, and the, the next step is this. You've got to recognize God's presence. Just recognize God's presence. You just simply realize that God's with you all the time. See, a lot of stress comes to us when we feel like we have to face life all by ourselves. Uh, look at the next verse, Isaiah 26, 3. In fact, would you read this out loud with me? Let's read it together. Ready? Here we go. You will keep the man in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you because he trusts in you. Wow. And then look at the next verse, Romans 8, 6. Let's read this one out loud. Ready? Here we go. To be spiritually minded is life and peace. Wow. So what's God saying to us? He's saying that peace is a mindset. Peace is a state of mind. That experience in peace is partially determined by what you focus on. And, and what God wants us to learn is that our first response to every stressful situation that we face in life is to recognize that God's right there with us. That we're not facing this thing alone. Amen? God's right there with us. See, it's a lot easier to be at peace in tough times when you know that Jesus is standing right there with you. Amen. See, if you're, a, if you're a lady, for example, driving down the freeway, and you have a blowout, and you're stuck at the side of the road, it's a lot easier to be at peace about that situation if you know that Jesus is right there with you. It's a little bit easier to be at peace about that. When your, your boss comes into the office and tells you that he's sorry, but he's going to have to lay you off work, he's going to have to let you go. It's a lot easier to be at peace about that when you know that Jesus is right there with you at that moment. That's true. When someone you love very much is suddenly taken away from you, it's a lot easier to find a place of peace in that if you know that Jesus is right there with you. No matter what it is that you may be facing, if you, really, if you will immediately recognize that you're not alone, that God's with you, right there with you, it's going to reduce your stress level considerably just to recognize the presence of Jesus. Listen, God is with you. Look at Psalm 46, 1 and 10. Let's read this one out loud together. Ready? Here we go. God is our refuge and strength and ever-present help in trouble. Be still and know that I am God. I love that, that verse. Be still and know that I am God. See, uh, the background of this verse is very interesting because 180,000 enemy troops had surrounded the city of Jerusalem and they were about to destroy the city. And the Israelites were getting pretty uptight about it. And so God said, and this is my translation here, but God said, hey guys, just relax, man. Chill out. It's going to be okay. I got your back. That, that's what God was saying. And so five minutes before they were to attack the city, God causes a plague to come down and decimate the enemy, saving Jerusalem. Uh, God said, don't worry, don't be stressed out, I'm your ever-present help in trouble. We just need to recognize that Jesus is always with us. In fact, here's, it, his very name, Emmanuel, means God with us, right? His very name, Emmanuel, God with us. So how do you know that God is with you? Well, verse 10 said, just be still in the midst of the trouble and know that God is with you. Just be still. Pascal once said, he said, all of man's problems come from his inability to sit still. <laughs> huh. And I think that's probably true. Have you ever noticed that hurry just aggravates worry? Mm -hmm. It does. I mean, uh, uh, the more hurried you get, the more worried you get about things. But God says, look, when, you, when, you're, when the stress is on, when the trouble comes, when the pressure is mounting, don't panic, but slow down and be still, be still and realize that God is with you. Just be still and sense the presence of God in your life. If you want to have peace of mind, you need to recognize that God is with you. You need to just sit down, be still, and let God be God in your life. Amen? Amen. Let God be God. I, I mean, I, I've had people say to me, well, Pastor, I, I never hear from God. I never hear from God. And I want to say, well, just sit down and be quiet. You know, just, just be quiet for a while. And maybe you will. God probably speaks to you. I mean, turn off the TV, turn off the radio, get off the phone. Just be still and listen for God. I mean, he'll make his presence known because God wants you to recognize that you're not alone. He wants you to sense his presence. He's with you every second of the day. If you want peace of mind, you need to accept God's part. You need to recognize God's presence. And the third step is this. Then you need to obey God's principles. Obey God's principles. That brings peace of mind too. Obey God's principles. 
Psalm 119, verses 165 and 166. Let's, let's read this one aloud together, too, okay? Let's read it together. Here we go. Those who love your laws have great peace of heart and mind and do not stumble. So I have obeyed your laws. Well, the Bible is our owner's manual of life. It's not just a book of ancient history. It's, it has powerful principles for living every day of our lives. And if you ignore the principles or never take the time to learn the principles of the Bible, then it's, it's your own tough luck. Amen. I mean, you're pretty much on your own then. Mm -hmm. Because God gave us his word to learn. Amen. And to understand how to live life. Uh, because God's word is full of principles on things like personal happiness, as we did just finish that series on happiness, and personal happiness, uh, principles on success. There are lots of principles in the Bible about how to have strong relationships, how to build your business. There's principles on how to do that. There are principles on how to increase your finances, principles on how to have a healthy life, principles on how to diet. Uh, there are principles on how to have a great marriage, how to raise godly children, principles on how to overcome temptation, principles on how to influence others. I mean, I'm telling you, look, every avenue of life that you can think of, God's Word has principles in it that help us to know how to live life to its fullest. And the truth is, you don't have to listen to this book. You don't have to listen to this book we call the Bible. You don't have to listen to it. I mean, you can just take it and ignore it and never read it, never study it and just ignore it. But the question I have for people who do that is just, who are you hurting when you do that? Who are you hurting? You're only hurting you. You're really only hurting you. Listen, listen. When you, have, when you live according to God's word, according to God's principles, you're going to experience peace of mind because you're going to be experiencing God's best for you. Amen. Uh, that, that, that's who you're hurting. It, 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 it is yourself when you don't listen to God's principles. If somebody says, well, now... Wait a minute, Pastor. What about all the rules and the commands in the Bible? Don't they restrict your lifestyle? Don't they put a restriction on your lifestyle? No, not the slightest. They don't. Folks, every command in the Bible is there for your own good. It's not for God's good. It's for our good. Amen? Amen. God didn't write the Bible for his sake. He wrote it for our sake. Amen. He gave it to us for our sake. I mean, do you think the command, for example, the command do not commit murder is there for your own good? Yes. Yeah. I think it is. Uh, you bet it is, especially for the person who's thinking about killing you. Mm -hmm. Don't you hope that they'll listen to that command? <laughs> of course you do. We, we want people to listen to that command. Amen? Yeah. Or how about the command, uh, thou shalt not steal? Is that a command that's good for you? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. We only wish more people were listening to that command today. Amen? Amen. All these people who just run into stores and just take stuff willy-nilly, just grab whatever they can and walk out. I mean... They realize they're breaking the commands of God. They don't even recognize the word of God. That's the problem. Amen? Amen. They don't recognize the word of God. See, God's principles are there for our own good. We've just got to be willing to obey them. And we can't expect other people to obey them if we don't obey them. Amen? Amen. We have to obey them before we can expect others to do it as well. Listen, you and I were made and created by God to live according to his word. And when we choose not to or we choose to ignore God's principles, then the result is S-T-R-E-S-S. -S. The result is lots of stress. Amen? Uh, stress comes when we ignore God's principles for our lives. And great peace of mind comes, though, when we choose to live out what God has told us to do. Now, here's the natural question then that comes from all of this. Here's the question. What has God told you to do that you haven't done yet? See, if, God's, if God has, in His Word... Or if God, through the Spirit, has told you to do something and you haven't done it yet, why not? See, that, that's a point of stress, isn't it? If God told you to do something and you just keep ignoring it, is it any wonder, then, that you have, have stress or have no peace? God's not going to give you a lot of peace until you start doing what he's already told you to do. Peace comes from obeying God's principles. Now, the fourth step, then, to finding peace of mind is this. Once you start doing that, obeying God's principles, then just trust God's plan. Trust God's plan. Even when I don't understand why things happen like they do, I still need to trust God's plan. Amen. Even when things don't make sense, I still need to trust God's plan. Look at the next verse on your outline, the Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. It says this, Trust in the Lord with all your own heart, with all your heart, and don't lean on your own understanding. So trust the Lord, don't lean on your own understanding, and in all your ways, acknowledge Him, and He will then direct your paths. Amen. Now, there are four verbs in that sentence that I want you to circle. Uh, the words trust, don't lean, acknowledge, and direct. Those four words. Trust, don't lean, acknowledge, and direct. 
See, the first three things that are listed there are what we're supposed to do. And if we do those things, then the fourth one is what God promises he'll do if we do the first three. If we do the first three, God says, I'm going to do this. Now, to trust in the Lord with all your heart, the first one, to depend on him, the question is when? When do we do that? Well, we do it even when things don't make sense. That's when we trust in the Lord. Um, why did I get fired, God? It doesn't make sense that I should get fired. Well, it doesn't have to make sense for you to depend on God. It doesn't have to make sense for us to trust him. Amen? We still have to trust him. But then God said, not only trust, but don't lean on your own understanding. Now, I want you to get this because this is the number one reason why even Christians don't have a lot of peace of mind at times too. It's because we're always trying to figure everything out. We, we think we ought to know. We think we should have a handle on it. We think we should be able to figure it all out. And the truth is, there's a lot of things in life that you're never going to be able to figure out. Amen. I mean, a lot of things. There are some questions in life that you're going to ask, and you're just not going to get a de definitive answer for it. I mean, the most common response and reaction to an illness or a crisis or a loss or the death of someone that we love is to ask why. Why, God? Why is this happening to me? Why is this taking place? And, and sometimes you may get an answer, but sometimes you don't. Sometimes you just don't. And so what do you do with the whys of life? Why did this relationship break up? Why did this person leave me? Why, why did I get fired? Listen, God does not promise us an explanation to everything that happens in life, nor does he owe us an explanation. God does what he does because he's God. Amen? Amen. He just does what he does because he's God. You don't have to have an answer for everything, but you do have to trust God. Lean not on your own understanding, but trust them. My people uh, tell me over and over again after they've been through a crisis or a loss of some kind, they'd, they'd say, Pastor, you know, after I stopped trying to figure it all out, and I just started trusting God once again, a wonderful peace of mind just flooded my heart. So I just started trusting God again. Folks, that, God is far more interested in bringing comfort to our hearts than he is in explaining things to us. He just wants to comfort our hearts in the midst of this. So let's lean not on our own understanding and trust him instead. Amen? Lean on him. This passage says that you trust, you lean not on your own understanding, and then you acknowledge. So what does that mean, to acknowledge? Well, it means that you admit some basic facts about God. Uh, you acknowledge things like God is a good God. God is a loving God. God knows all about my problems. God's in control. God has the power to change my problems. God knows what he's doing. God has a plan and purpose for my life. God doesn't make mistakes. Amen. I mean, you just acknowledge and affirm some of the basic truths about God, and then that helps to bring a peace of mind about what's going on. Folks, the result of trusting God, leaning out on your own understanding, and acknowledging God is that God then promises to direct our paths, to give us direction. And that will bring peace. Why? Because one of the chief causes of stress in a lot of people's life is indecision. Uh, I can't decide which way to go. I can't decide which direction to take. I can't decide which, which path to choose. Do I hold on or do I let go? Do I stay or do I leave? You know, Indecision causes stress. But when you're trusting God and acknowledging God and leaning on God, then God promises then to direct your paths. And that settles the issue and that brings peace. Because God's going to take care of it. God's going to ultimately somehow give you the direction you need to take. He's going to point you in the right direction. And then you can say like Paul in Philippians 4.12, I have learned to be content whatever the circumstance. Amen. See, that's a peace of mind. Amen? Paul could say it because he had peace of mind. I've learned to be content no matter what the circumstance. Why? Because I have a peace of mind about this. And then finally, number five, I mean, first of all, you accept God's pardon, you recognize God's presence, you obey God's principles, you trust God's plans, and then the last step of peace of mind is this. You ask God for provision. Just ask God for provision. One of the greatest destroyers of peace of mind is worry. Worry creates stress. Um, but worry is a great um, uh, stress provider. And some of us worry a lot. In fact, some have become professional worriers. <laughs> A lot of people wake up in the morning and you just need a cup of coffee to go with your worry. I mean, that's just the way we are. We wake up worrying like that. And, and uh, we worry about things like, what if I don't have the time? Or what if I don't have the money? Or what if I don't have the energy? What if? What if? What if? What if I can't make it through the day? What if? What if? What if? And we worry because we fear 
that we're going to lack something, that we're not going to have enough of something. And folks, worry is the exact opposite of peace of mind. Mm -hmm. In fact, the Greek word for worry is a word that means to choke or to strangle. That's what the Greek word means. It means to strangle. Have you ever been strangled by worry? You know, you feel like worry is choking you, just choking the life right out of you? Well, it is. It's choking the peace right out of your life. Here, here's God's antidote to worry. It's the next verse on your outline in Philippians 4, 6. Paul said this, don't worry about anything, instead pray about everything. Amen. There's the, there's the answer to stress, uh, to worry. Read that with me. It says, don't worry pray about, about anything. anything, instead pray, pray about, about everything. everything. I think that that's probably one of the most difficult verses in the Bible to obey, though. I really do. I mean, don't worry about anything. I don't know about you, but I kind of blew it this week. I've already worried about some stuff. There was there some stuff I worried about this week. Um, but I, I, I knew that I was worrying about it, but I also knew what God's Word told me to do. And, uh, and so instead of worrying about it, I took it to the Lord in prayer, and that released the worry. It gave me peace of mind again because I gave it to God. I prayed. You see, God's saying that basically you have two options in life. One brings stress and one brings peace of mind. The two options are you can panic or you can pray. Uh, those are the options, panic or pray. You can worry or you can pray. And, and what he's saying is that if you're not praying, you're worrying. It's just that simple. If you aren't praying, then you're going to be worrying. Paul goes on to say in Philippians 4, 6, 7, uh, 4, chapter 4, verses 6 and 7, he says, don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God your needs and don't forget to thank him for his answers. In other words, the answer's on the way, amen? amen. You tell him about your needs, the answer's on the way. If you do this, he says, you will experience God's peace, which is far more wonderful than the human mind can understand. Amen. The point is this, turn your cares into prayers. Worry never solves anything, but prayer can do something about it. Amen. Prayer can change things. Many years ago, I went to a stress management seminar that my company was sponsoring. Uh, they decided uh, that they wanted me to go to the stress management. It was Rainbow Baking Company, and uh, I, was a, I was a supervisor for Rainbow Baking Company and for a bunch of routes. And, uh, and so they wanted me, and so they knew that all the supervisors were always under stress because of the routes and controlling the routes and dealing with the routes and the stores and all that kind of stuff. And, and, um, and so they, they sent us to a, a stress management uh, seminar thing. And, um, and, I, and I thought, well, what can it hurt? I'll go listen to this guy and see what he says about how to deal with stress. And at the end of the day, the guy concluded by saying, and, and I was a Christian at this time. I was, I was a born-again believer, trusting God. I was going to church at that time and stuff. And, but the guy said, okay, now I, I, I'm going to give you, he said at the end of the seminar, he said, I'm going to give you my, my most important stress tip, he said. He said, everybody needs an unconditional listener that you can unload on. That's what he said. Everybody needs an unconditional listener that you can unload on. And, uh, and he said, however, there is no human being who can really be an unconditional listener. And I thought, all right, this guy's going to, he's going to be talking about prayer. He's going to mention Godness. That's awesome. Well, he says, everybody needs an unconditional listener, but no human being is an unconditional listener. Therefore, in our stress management seminars, here's what we recommend. We recommend that you go talk to your pet. <laughs> you go talk to your pet. And, and I'm going, give me a break. Be serious. I'm supposed to go home and have a heart-to-heart -heart with my goldfish? I don't think so. I don't think so. I mean, that, that's going to make my stress disappear? I don't think so. Folks, Adam had a menagerie of animals all around him, and yet God never said, talk to the animals, Adam. Mm -hmm. go, go tell the animals your problems. Folks, that's the world's idea of stress management. Go hug a tree, <laughs> right? You know, go, <laughs> go talk to a dog or something. But, but God has a much better idea. God says, talk to me. Mm -hmm. Because God will not only listen, but God will actually talk back. As a matter of fact, he'll help you solve the situation. Uh, so what am I saying? Just this, that the Bible teaches very clearly that peace of mind is to be the normal Christian lifestyle. Peace of mind in a Christian is not to be the abnormal experience. When people see the Christian community from the outside, they ought to see a bunch of people who are not stressed out. Amen. They ought to see a bunch of people who are really at peace with themselves and at peace with God. Having a peace of mind in the midst of everyday life really ought to be the normal way for Christians to live. 
It's not God's will that you always be uptight and irritable and tense and nervous and stressed out. That's the way the rest of the world come out from among the world, right? Be different. Be separate from the world. We're to be different. We're to act different. Peace of mind stands out. God's plan for your life is a life filled with his peace. But let me also make it clear what peace is not. Peace is not problem-free living because you're always going to have problems. Yeah. Amen? We're always going to have problems. And, and peace is not the absence of conflict because we're always going to have conflict, especially in these days leading up to the return of Jesus Christ. Conflict is always going to be there. Amen? Amen. And peace is not having everything go your own way because it's not always going to go your own way. Okay. And peace is not never having deadlines and pressure because we're always going to have those things. Those things are always going to be on us. But let me give you a definition for God's peace. It's the next key thought on your outline there. Peace Peace really is a sense of order that comes from ordering my life according to God's will. Peace is a sense of order that comes from ordering my life according to God's will. You get in on God's will, you get in on the Bible, you get in on reading the Word and start doing things God's way, start living God's way, start following after God's Spirit, trusting God's Spirit. I mean, when you start doing that, all of a sudden things begin to fall into place. And, and there's a sense of peace that comes as a result of that. It's knowing that no matter what else is going on, Jesus is right there with you, and, and you can do his will in your life. Let me, let me just finish with this. What, what is it that maybe has got you uptight a little bit today? I mean, maybe it's your kids. Maybe it's a problem at work. Maybe it's your finances are going down the toilet. <laughs> maybe you're facing some health problems. The older we get, the more it seem, we seem to face that kind of stuff. Maybe it's a relationship that's going bad or messed up or something like that. What, what's got you kind of tied? Does Jesus have anything to say to us today? Of course he does. Look at the next verse on your outline there, John 14, 1. Look at that. Jesus said, do not let your heart be troubled. Trust in God. Trust also in me. Amen. Would you, let's read that together. Jesus said, do, do not let your heart be troubled. Trust in God. Trust also in me. The antidote, the answer to whatever's got you stressed out or uptight today is really the person of Jesus Christ himself. The Bible makes it very clear that Jesus Christ is the Prince of Peace. Amen? Amen. And you're never going to have ultimate peace in your life until the Prince of Peace is invited into your life to be the resident president of your life. If you're tired of living a life of constant stress, then I suggest you give these principles a try. You give these points a try. You put them into practice. And see if God doesn't give you a peace of mind. You know, at the heart of every storm, there is a center that's quiet. Amen. At the heart of every storm. While everything else is blowing apart, there's that quiet center. You just have to have that kind of peace that's available to you when you're at the center of God's life. At the center of God's will. When you're with Jesus. Because no matter what's going on, when you've got Jesus right there with you, He's going to give you what you need to get through it. No matter what it is that you need to get through it. Amen. But to experience God's peace consistently, you've got to do five things. First, accept God's pardon. If you haven't done that, do it. Really accept his pardon. Just let go of the past. Release the past. Those sins. that You don't have to punish yourself anymore. You don't have to pay for it anymore. God's already done that. It's over as far as he's concerned. you got to let it go. You recognize God's presence. You just see God in your life every day. He's there at work. Obey God's principles. Get into God's word. Spend time listening to God as he instructs you on how to get the most out of life. And trust God's plan. What you can't figure out, just put in God's hands and trust him. He's in control of our lives. And then ask for God's provision. Instead of panicking, pray. And if you do those five things, then I think, Peace of mind it can be yours, it can be mine, it can be ours. It can be any Christians who's willing to put those things into practice. And all of God's people said, Amen. 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 Let's pray. Father, we just thank you once again for the teachings of your word. We thank you for the principles that help us to live life to its fullest. Father, I think these are really wonderful principles that if we employ them, Father, I know that we can find peace of mind. Even in the midst of daily stress, daily pressure, all the things that come against us. And so, Lord, I really do accept your forgiveness of those things in my past, 
that I might still be, feel guilty of, Father, I, I receive your forgiveness. And I thank you for setting me free from that. Help me to recognize your presence every day. Help me, Lord, to obey your principles, to, to, to spend time in your word, to learn about your plan for my life. Help me to trust your plan for my life. Even though I don't always understand what's going on, I can still trust you. I don't want to lean on my own understanding, but I want to acknowledge you and follow you as you direct my paths. Help me to be able to pray, Lord. Before I begin to panic, help me to turn that thing into prayer and just lean on you. I want your peace in my life, Lord, not as the world gives, but as you give. I'm giving up my stress right now. I'm just giving it to you and asking for that peace of mind that is a free gift that only you can give. Thank you, Father, for we love you and we praise you. We ask all this in Jesus' holy name. And all God's people said, Amen. 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 Well, may the Lord bless you and keep you and may he cause his face to shine upon you and may the peace of God envelop your life throughout the rest of the week and may that peace be a reflection of God's work in your life to others who are lost. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen.